Hello. We'll be looking uh, at heat transfer in a plate today. Uh, we'll see how we can use Octave or MATLAB to get the temperature distribution in a plate uh, given certain boundary conditions. Uh, it's, again, it's quite simple. Uh, for example, if this is your plate um, and uh, the boundary conditions that you have defined are that at this side, for example, uh, you have 100 degrees Celsius on this edge you have let's say 0 degrees Celsius 0 here and 0 here right so these sides are maintained at 0 uh, and the top side is maintained at 100 degrees Celsius so <clears throat> if you want to find out how the temperature uh, changes within this domain right uh, then how would you do it so uh, in order to solve for the solve this heat transfer problem uh, we need to know the governing equations right if we have the governing uh, differential equations we can solve it by applying the proper boundary conditions and get our answer. So the answer would be the temperature distribution within the split. Okay, so let's uh, so we need the governing equations. So let's search for steady state heat transfer. Okay. We are interested in, in a steady state. That means we are not uh, interested in the time uh, varying values. What I mean is, what I mean by steady state is that. Uh, we are interested in the values when the values have stopped changing. For example, if you have kept this plate at these conditions for let's say 100 days and you, then you come back and look at it, the temperature distribution that you get is called a steady state temperature distribution. All the transient things have finished. They are done with uh, all the you know fluctuations and you are left with some um, uh, non-changing values. Anyway, so let's yeah, so this one, right? So this is a steady state uh, differential equation. So I can use this. It's, it's del square uh, it's del square t by del x square plus del square t by del y square and we are not interested in the del z, z square because our problem is a two dimensional one and there is no this is heat generation there is no heat generation within the plate I am assuming there is none so our equation will reduce to only this so it will be del square it will be del square t by del x square plus del square t by del y square equals zero. So this is the governing equation that we have to solve within this domain. All right. Um, how do we solve it? Uh, we can do it analytically, but uh, then 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 you'll have to use your mathematical knowledge uh, for that. Uh, but we have tools with us, right? Octave or MATLAB, so we can do this numerically. And you don't need you don't need uh, very deep mathematical knowledge to solve that. So what I mean by numerically is that we'll be evaluating these uh, second order differential, uh, second order derivatives uh, algebraically. So what we'll do is a technique called using a technique called finite difference method, which uses something called a Taylor series expansion. So I will not be going into details of these things. So using these techniques, I can write these uh, derivatives in terms of algebraic equations. So the first one, so for example, what I do is, what I mean by numerical uh, solution is that I'll be dividing this, um, I'll be dividing this domain into a lot of grids, right? For example, let's do this quickly, if I can. Yeah, so what I do is I divide it into many grids and numerically, numerical solution will give me values at each of these nodes, right? I, so that's the limitation of numerical uh, solutions that when you solve using num uh, numerical methods you only get discrete values you only get values at these nodes when you solve it analytically you get values anywhere in between wherever you want but when you're doing it numerically you're only getting it at discrete points so yeah so since we are doing it numerically um, we need to write this derivative in terms of discrete points so if you choose a discrete point such as this one for example if I say this is I comma j right if i describe its position as i comma j then this one would be i plus one comma j this one would be i minus one comma j and this would be i comma j plus one and this bottom one would be i comma j minus one so let's write these derivatives in terms of this these points so <coughs> del square t by del x square will be t i plus one comma j minus two t i comma j plus t i comma t i minus 1 comma j divided by del x square plus del square t by del y square will be del uh, t i j plus 1 minus 2 t i comma j 
प्लस टी आई कॉमा जे माइनस वन डेल्टा वाई स्क्वायर इक्वल्स जीरो सो इफ यू सिंप्लीफाई इट वॉट यू गेट एस टी आई कॉमा जे इक्वल्स वन बाई फोर टी आई प्लस वन कॉमा जे प्लस टी आई माइनस वन कॉमा जे प्लस टी आई जे प्लस वन प्लस टी आई जे माइनस वन राइट सो दिस इज द इक्वेशन दैट यू गेट फॉर ईच नोट राइट so if i solve this equation at each node at each grid points i'll get the value of the temperature at those grid points i need to run multiple iterations of it so that uh, i approach i uh, my solution converges to the real value so i'll tell you i'll show you what i mean by that but i think uh, right now it is clear so let me just uh, i hope it is clear let me just go through it once again quickly what we are doing is we are solving for the temperature values within this plate numerically so we have this uh, governing equation using these methods called finite difference method and data series we we come up with uh, this representation of the differential uh, equation and using this equation we can solve you know point by point at each grid points and we can get the values of temperature so let's do this in matlab before i produce uh, before i uh, go ahead with uh, octave or matlab coding uh, i'll just tell you how i'm numbering the nodes there so um, in matlab when i define a matrix uh, my i values right uh, these are my row values and for a matrix and this is for a matrix so my uh, row values they uh, they are represented by i and they go along this direction and my column values uh, the column positions they are represented by j and they go along this direction right so i'll be uh, naming my grid points in matlab using this convention i hope this makes sense when so when i what i mean is uh, in the code if i increase y if i increase i it means i am going down my row is increasing and in the code if i increase j it means i am going to the right that means my columns are increasing right i feel i think that makes sense and so let's go ahead with the coding all right so uh, let's uh, go to my folder where I the code scratch with computations let me open up my editor when and let me uh, choose a name for this heat transfer will be an app name right so what do i do let i need this plate right i need i need to define a grid for this plate so let me choose 10 points in the x direction another 10 points in the y direction so i have a grid of 10 by 10 right so i need temperature values so i don't have uh, i haven't calculated them yet but i need some initial values right i need some initial values so that i can start with calculating from there so initially if i have to assign values to this i'm going to assign 0 to everyone and zeros to all these all right so the size of that matrix will be nx by ny now i need to give boundary conditions so remember according to this convention right if i transfer this convention here this i comma j convention to this grid so my j values will vary along this and my i values will vary along this so uh these are straight lines um yeah so uh, the way i specify the boundary condition is that if you look at this plate if you this edge has 100 degrees celsius right so what you can write is all the for all the uh, columns and the first row the value is going to be 100 right these are all the columns and this is the first row so for all the columns and the first row or the first row and all the columns the value is going to be 100 so i write the first row and all the columns equals 100 the first column and all the rows equals zeros so first all the rows first column equals 0 this one last row all the column uh, sorry the last column and all the rows equals 0 so all the rows last column equal 0 and the last one the last row and all the column equal 0 so the last row means end all the columns means colon equal 0 so i have to find my boundary conditions all right fine so now let's go ahead and solve it so for i 
I'm going to uh, you know go grid point by grid point from here to here so remember I don't have to because the boundary conditions are already defined I will not be going through them while in my going through my code let me check if it is recording yep. so I'll be going from this point right till here then again all this way till here I'll be ignoring the boundary condi I'll be ignoring the nodes on the boundaries because those values are fixed because they are the boundary conditions so I will go from not 1 but 2 to nx minus 1 j will go from 2 to ny minus 1 so these are the two loops that I have what do I write inside the loop t i comma j equals 1 by 4 0 0.25 times t i plus 1 comma j plus t i minus 1 comma j plus t i comma j plus 1 um, sorry plus t i comma j minus 1 right so i have these values so if i run it if i solve it at each grid points i should get the correct answer right so let me save this open up octave and call this heat transfer right so i have these t values calculated for me so let me draw a control plot a control f plot a field contour and see all right so this is the one thing that you will notice is it seems flipped i had defined 100 at the top but it seems that it has come at the bottom so this is how this um this is how the function contour f works so it plots the first row of the matrix at the bottom so that's the problem here if you want you can flip it you can call this command called flip upside down flip ud and then it will become the correct uh, orientation so anyway that's just for your uh, uh, viewing purpose so i have this right but there's there seems uh, something seems wrong uh, it is uh, if it is 100 and these are all our zeros then the temperature should have you know increased near the boundaries as well so what was wrong is that uh, i need to run multiple iterations of this loop in order to get the correct value how many iterations so for example if I run it from uh, let's say iter 100 let's say I run it for 100 iterations right and just randomly I've chosen a number of iterations right so if I run it for 100 iterations let's see how far the heat has transferred so now it looks uh, realistic that means if this is 100 these are again you can also plot the color bar at the side so this is 100 and the and the distance the rest are um, zero the heat has in fact transferred from this to the edges so i chose uh, i chose 100 iterations but how do you come up with that number so instead of doing 100 iterations what you can do is what you can do is you can calculate the values at each iteration and see how close it is to its previous iteration what i mean is okay let me define uh, something called t old and let, 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 let me give it same as t so i'll tell you what i'm doing uh, so let's store this in t old right and just bear with me let me define error as one and some value of tolerance as one e 10 to uh, one into 10 to power minus 10 so let me remove this and what i write is while error is greater than tall keep on running this loop and how do i calculate the error so my error it gives me, so what i do is i need to know how close is my new matrix of temperature to the old matrix of temperature so if you have a, two points in a three-dimensional uh, domain xyz then you can use that uh, under square root x1 minus x2 square plus y2 1 minus y1 square plus z3 z2 minus z1 square to find the distance between them but what if you have a two what if you have two matrices right if you want to calculate the distance between them you can use this thing called norm actually what you do in three points what you do with the two points in three dimensional uh, domain is the same as norm but uh, if you don't want to think too much in detail if you don't want to give much thought to this just know that if you want to calculate the euclidean distance between uh, two matrices then you can use this function called norm right so norm what do i pass in the norm so the difference between t old um, minus 
what's the other thing I have um, T old and T right so this will give me the difference between those and then I update my TS T old right I hope this makes some sense I hope it does all right so let me run this and check if I'm getting the correct answer um, line number 21 line 21 oh, I had to write the I forgot to write the indices All right, now let's see yeah so now even without providing the uh, number of iterations I just gave a condition that keep running the loop until the error is greater than tolerance as soon as the error goes below 1 into rate to power minus 10 stop and the define the criteria that, that I have defined for error is this right the difference between the old value and the new value all right so using this you have got the uh, solution another thing that you can do is uh, let's go back quickly let's do something called I think you had covered this in the previous video on gradient descent but uh, if you you can also how you know uh, strengthen your concept of gradient using this problem so let's calculate the gradient of the um, let's calculate the gradient of temperature so it's a two-dimensional field right so I'll have two values the rate of change along two directions so let one be a uh, gx the other will be gy all right so I can plot this using it's a vector right it's a vector with two, di two components and I told you the gradient gives the direction of the greatest change so I'll, in order to plot a vector I have to use the command called quiver and I pass in the two components of the vector gx gy and now let's wait I forgot to write hold on and I also forgot to write control F alright so yeah what you can see is now you have arrows specifying the direction but there seems something seems wrong because uh, if this is heated uh, the yellow part is the heated part and the blue is the cold then the arrow should be in the opposite direction so what's wrong is there's nothing wrong actually for example if you have a straight line and if you have 100 degrees celsius here and 200 here the gradient and the, maybe this is separated by let's say uh, one meter the gradient or the rate of change the gradient is simply the rate of change in the sing in a single dimension right so the gradient dt by uh, dx here will be um, what will it be it will be 200 minus 100 divided by 1 right so that's 100 so the gradient is positive along the uh, uh, the gradient uh, I have calculated along which uh, this, I'm sorry when I calculate the gradient what I do is I subtract this by this but when I look at the heat transfer I know it's going to go from this to this so the the way I calculate the gradient uh, my positive uh, the gradient will correspond to the heat transfer direction if I multiply that by 1 right the negative of this will correspond to the direction of the heat transfer because when you're calculating the gradient what you do is you do you go along this direction to get a positive value so 200 minus 100 by 1 equals 100 but we know that the heat transfer takes place in the opposite direction which is uh, from 200 to 100 so what you need to do here in order to get the correct answer or get the correct di uh, direction of the arrows is just multiply it by a negative sign and now you have the correct answer right um, again if you want to look at the color bar type in color bar and then this is what you get so I hope and if you want to remove these you know lines control lines you can also do this so let me just go back to edit type in this command or this in argument called uh, 
line color and none and let me also write color bar here itself so you don't have those lines anymore so i hope this was uh, you know good learning demonstration for you uh, 